By the end of the 1200s, Europe had reached the peak of the High Middle Ages. Art and culture were thriving in towns and universities. The revival of trade had increased wealth and opened up new social opportunities. And monarchs were imposing order and stability after centuries of feudal warfare. By the mid-1300s, however, Europeans felt as though the end of the world had come. Widespread crop failures brought famine and starvation. Then, plague and war ravaged populations. When desperate Europeans turned to the church for help and guidance, they found it splintered by corruption, political intrigue, and petty personal rivalry. The three great pillars that supported the medieval world, the manor system, feudalism, and the church, all began to crack under the weight of disasters both natural and man-made. As a result, the 14th century is sometimes referred to as a century of crisis. Although Europe eventually recovered from these terrible events, the upheavals of the 1300s and 1400s mark the end of the Middle Ages and the beginning of the early modern age. In 1300, the arrogant Pope Boniface VIII challenged King Philip IV of France, claiming to have supreme authority over the king. Philip responded by arresting the Pope, who was rescued by a group of Italian nobles, but then died shortly thereafter. Philip then arranged to have a French bishop elected as Pope. In 1305, that Pope moved to the city of Avignon in southern France, and ran the church from there under the watchful eyes of the king. The period from roughly 1309 to 1376, when the popes resided at Avignon, was called the Babylonian Captivity, a reference to the 70 years the ancient Israelites were held captive in the city of Babylon in Mesopotamia. Many Christians opposed the Pope's move to Avignon, and in 1378, an Italian was elected as the new Pope and ruled from Rome. The angry French elected their own Pope, and for 39 years, two Popes both claimed to be the true leaders of the Church, a situation called the Great Schism. The conflict divided all of Europe and was not resolved until 1415 when the Council of Constance, a meeting of important church leaders, finally installed a new pope that all sides could accept. The Great Schism badly damaged the faith of Christian believers. The pope was widely believed to be the leader of Christendom, so when the rival popes viciously denounced each other, they undermined the institution that served as the foundation of the church. The Great Schism thus hurt people's faith in the Church, which they now saw as being corrupted by wealth, ambition, and power. The English scholar John Wycliffe and the Bohemian John Huss both criticized the Church and claimed that the Bible, and not the Pope, was the only source for how to live a good Christian life. Wycliffe translated the Bible into English, but his followers, known as Lollards, were viciously persecuted. Haas was eventually burned at the stake for his beliefs. For much of the 13th century, Europe had experienced good harvests and an expanding population. By century's end, however, a succession of disastrous changes had begun. For one thing, there were noticeable changes in weather patterns, as Europe entered a period of cooler temperatures known as the Little Ice Age. During this period, shortened growing seasons and disastrous weather conditions including heavy storms and constant rain, destroyed crops and led to widespread famine and hunger. The Great Famine of 1315 to 1317 in Northern Europe began an all-too-familiar pattern. Some historians have pointed out that famine could have led to chronic malnutrition, which in turn contributed to increased infant mortality, lower birth rates, and higher susceptibility to disease because malnourished people are less able to resist infection. In the middle of the 14th century, the Black Death, the popular name for a particularly virulent form of the bubonic plague, struck a Europe already weakened by famine and war. The Black Death was the most devastating natural disaster in European history. It ravaged Europe's population and caused economic, social, political, and cultural upheaval. The disease was probably brought to Europe by merchants fleeing Mongol armies attacking the area around the Black Sea. Starting in Italy in 1347, the plague swept across Europe. In 1348, the plague spread through France and the Low Countries, and into Germany. By the end of that year, it had moved to England, ravaging it in 1349. By the end of 1349, the plague had reached Scandinavia. 
Eastern Europe and Russia were affected by 1351, although mortality rates were never as high there as they were in Western and Central Europe. Mortality figures for the Black Death were incredibly high. Italy, which had the largest and most densely populated cities, and was the first place where the plague struck, was especially hard hit. Its crowded cities suffered losses of 50 to 60 percent. In northern France, farming villages suffered mortality rates of 30 percent, and cities such as Rouen experienced losses as high as 40 percent. In England and Germany, entire villages disappeared. It has been estimated that the European population declined by 25 to 50 percent between 1347 and 1351. And the plague did not end in 1351. There were major outbreaks again in 1361, 1362, and 1369, and then regular recurrences during the remainder of the 14th century and all of the 15th century. The horrors of the plague led to extreme behaviors. The prevalence of death caused some people to live wildly and indulge in pleasures. Others became more devoted to religion. Groups of people called flagellants wandered from town to town flogging each other with whips to win the forgiveness of a god whom they felt had sent the plague to punish humans for their sinful ways. Jews were often accused of causing the plague and violently persecuted. The worst attacks against Jews took place in German cities and towns. In response to persecution, many Jews fled eastward to Russia and to Poland, where the Polish king offered them protection. Eastern Europe became home to large Jewish communities. The plague had important social and economic effects on Europe. The loss of population disrupted the manor system. Because there were now fewer workers, peasants demanded better treatment and wages. When the nobility refused, peasants rebelled violently. In 1358, a major peasant revolt broke out in northern France. The English Peasants' Revolt of 1381 broke out in direct response to aristocratic efforts to tax the peasants. Although both revolts failed, nobles throughout Western Europe were eventually forced to eliminate many feudal obligations and fees. The inability of the church to stop the plague hurt its prestige and power. Art and literature from the period became consumed with images of death and suffering. The problems caused by the Great Schism and Black Death were exacerbated by a long and bloody war between France and England called the Hundred Years' War. When the last Capetian king died without an heir in 1328, the English king Edward III claimed the throne. Many French nobles resisted, and war broke out. Despite being outnumbered, the English initially had the upper hand thanks to the longbow, a powerful missile weapon that could strike down the heavily armored French knights. At the Battle of Crecy in 1346, English longbowmen decimated a force of French knights. Under the bold King Henry V, the English again defeated the French in 1415 at the famous Battle of Agincourt. By 1429, the French were desperate. Their last major stronghold at Orléans in central France was about to be captured by the English. Then a young girl named Joan of Arc miraculously led the French troops to victory. Though later captured and executed as a witch by the English, her heroism turned the tide of the war. Another important factor that aided the French was the introduction of gunpowder weapons. Gunpowder technology had been brought to Europe from China in the early 1300s. Just as a simple longbow could defeat the strongest knight, cannons could now be used to break down the toughest castle walls. The Hundred Years' War finally ended in 1453. Both France and England experienced major changes as a result of the conflict. Kings in both nations acquired greater prestige and came to be seen less as feudal lords and more as national leaders ruling over people united by common customs, language, and history. The feudal nobility was weakened because so many died in the fighting, and also because new technology like the longbow and gunpowder made mounted knights obsolete. France experienced terrible devastation, since most of the war was fought there, but ultimately the country recovered and the French monarchy grew stronger. 
In the immediate aftermath of the war, the English suffered a period of internal turmoil known as the War of the Roses, in which two noble houses fought for the throne until Henry VII of the Tudor family finally seized power. The loss of their French territory in the Hundred Years' War led the English to build up their navy and begin overseas exploration. Because English rulers constantly had to turn to Parliament for new taxes to pay for the war, its power greatly increased during this period.